Well, thanks for joining us again. Um, another eBay rescue. This time we're looking at these vented vans. Now, this is not the one we're working on. Um, I've got two of the same, and um, they both had damaged roofs. So that's got a bit of putty in that, ready to uh, ready to flat back. The other one's got putty in, you'll see. And uh, I took the roof off and broke it, so I need to do it again. But never mind. Uh, here it is. So the roof's come off, and the putty has stayed on. Um, and I primed it in black. You didn't want to see me do that because it's boring. Um, so there the roof will go on and it leaves a bit of a crack. Um, I don't actually repair it in this video. I should have repaired it. I'll, I'll probably will touch it in after. But anyway, painted it all black. I've glued the doors um, shut on one side and open on the other. So we're going to add some uh, some detail inside. Just something, a bit of interest. If the doors open, we may as well use them. Now this one is going to be um, a static model. Um, a primary that's the, the idea so um, we're going to get rid of the, the tension uh, couplings and we're going to add these um, instant couplers I think they're called from uh, Acura Scale I forgot what they're called for a minute Acura Scale um, so they're really nice So, but we need to take off that um, coupling there So we need to take these uh, couplings off and we just drill the rivet off. That's uh, the easiest way to, uh, to make it start, get that out of the way. And we just need it to, to clean that up. So we'll pop the wheels off, get them out of the way because they're uh, a little bit damaged otherwise probably. We need to paint them anyway. And with the Dremel with a um, cutting disc in there, a small cutting disc, we'll just cut the lugs off. We'll just do it roughly to start with, just so we uh, can see where we're going. It was very, um, very simple to unfortunately um, nick the uh, the buffers with the with the sanding disc or with the uh, cutting disc. Um, which is something that I, I'm sure I do later on anyway, unfortunately, but uh, it doesn't really notice, so we got away with that one, I think. So just gonna tidy that up, and there's that little lump where the rivet goes into the chassis. So just gonna flat that back a little bit, and then we'll tidy it up with uh, this fret file and um, a little bit of uh, 400 grit. A little bit after this, I'll just do that off camera. And then with a small drill bit, I think this is um, one mil, I think. I'm just gonna make a little hole just to take the, um, the hook for the coupling. Now these are, um, I say, they're from a Cura scale, and they are, um, they're actually metal, so I was quite surprised um, for what they cost. I think eight for three pound or something. Um, I will put the link down the, the bottom in the description. Um, it's not affiliated, uh, but please do go and have a look. Um, they've got some nice bits on there, some nice accessories and sprung buffers, etc. So, dab of super glue, just going to pop that into place and we'll give that a minute. Okay, so um, with the doors open, I thought it's worth putting uh, a few bits of rubbish in the interior. These are just, um, apart from out of focus, there are uh, a couple of uh, wheels that I've had printed off uh, for a previous project and there's also um, some barrels where we see there's uh, some open barrels Oops. No, two of those and uh, a pallet, I found a pallet as well and we're going to throw those in a minute and there's also a bit of some chain, I'll do that uh, add them later so for the rust for the um, for the main body, we're going to use these four colours. And uh, you probably right, you did see uh, a colour there called Sizzling Pink uh, from Citadel. I'll put the link down down below again. Um, rust is lots of different colours, and we're going to do the typical oranges and browns. So you can see we've done the uh, darker brown, now a slightly lighter one. And then I think for the next one, what we'll do is uh, we'll just dab it in with a sponge which we'll is paint the interior quickly with this as well because you want some sort of color on the interior we won't take too much time on side and inside we won't see that much of it just 
just a couple of patches of the lighter um, rust tone that we we're going to use. I will put all the colours in the description. There are lots and lots of different colours on this particular one. Just make the patches of rust uh, random, or if you have got a particular place that you want to look rusty, like one of the doors or this panel, the, the, the front and back, the corrugated panels, we're going to treat a little bit differently to the rest. They're not going to be uh, as rusty as the, the rest of the model. And for the light, uh, the light of rust shade, the um, I think it's just called orange. Um, we are going to um, just dab that on with a sponge. You can do it with a brush, with a, a stippler on with a brush if you want to, um, or just spray patches. Again, whatever you choose to do. But we're just going to try something different here, and just a couple of patches with the uh, with a sponge. Um, so just clean the sponge off a little bit. We don't want it too uh, too moist as we go. Too much paint on there, and just touch it in as we go. Try and rotate the uh, the sponge if you do anything like this because you end up getting a pattern and uh, that's not a good look. But like with most of these finishes, a lot of it's not going to show through anyway by the time we put the rest of the layers on. Um, but it's just a layer there and it's kind of a hint of something else. Okay, so our final colour is this um, colour from Citadel, and um, it's kind of a mauvey pink. We put it on really, really thinly, so it's, um, it is thinned down quite a lot. But if you look at rust, they do have these mauve and purple tones in. So um, it's an experiment. I've seen it done before, and I thought I'd give it a try on this particular one. The roof, I'm not sure what roofs are made of, to be honest. So if anyone does know what roof of this era was, uh, of this era, would have been made from. But we're working on the assumption it's like an aluminium um, and covered in a bitumen. That's kind of the look we're going for. So it's sprayed in stainless steel and then, or sprayed in steel, I think the color is called. And then we're just doing some darker patches. Not forgetting to paint the wheels of course we'll come back to those in a little bit and then for our we're going to do hairspray chipping which we've done before um, putting this on really really uh, liberally because we want so we'll give the roof a uh, um, a coat of hairspray as well any hairspray um, this is just as uh, extra firm hold um, it's lasted for ages absolutely uh, years I've had this the one can now our main color we, we, we're going to start with the kind of um, bulk site brown this is actually called flat earth I think from uh, Vallejo and we're just going to give it a, um, a coat of this all around and cover everything that we've done so far Just to add a, a little bit of variation, we've added some um, a lighter shade. I think it was with rocky sand, but just a, a lighter shade, just to add a bit of a uh, like a fade to the top. And then this is um, the roof again. Um, we're going to cover this in a dark grey. It actually dries darker than it looks there. And then we fit the interior. And I'm just going to glue these bits into place. They are just in. Um, they're just in primer at the moment and we'll paint them when they're in. So 
So there's the barrel, and then um, next, with a bit of luck, is um, is the pallet. The main thing I wanted to just obscure that sort of lump in the middle. We don't need to, to uh, put lots and lots of uh, bits in there because you only see a small amount through the doorway anyway. So just a few uh, strategically placed accessories will do. Not too sure why there'd be a wheel in there. I guess it's just um, sitting in a siding and, and people are just putting rubbish in there, getting it out of the way. Now, if you've not already subscribed, um, please do and click the uh, the bell icon and then when we upload a new video you'll get to know about that a lot of our videos are viewed by our subscribers uh, more than half um, but it's always good to, uh, to have some new uh, new people subscribe and um, spread the word so uh, if you're new to the channel yeah I'd say do subscribe um, and come and see us on a regular basis um, we do lots of videos at the moment we've, we've put up about five in the last week so uh, we're probably going for it now so uh, some colours on the uh, on the interior, just doing it in brush, um, really not taking a great amount of time because um, because it's, it, it will be, only a small amount will be seen. So I've got um, a dark grey, it's actually darker than it looks in the picture there, uh, dark grey on the tyres, um, a couple of shades of brown we're going to use for the, uh, for the barrels and the palette, you can see I've added in some chains as well. Just uh, quickly super good those into place. And this will all get a weathering powder as well later on, so uh, it will be a, uh, not not quite as clean as it looks at the moment. shade of, uh, of wood there just a, a bit of variety So then our final piece on the interior will be um, a little bit of rust into the centre of the wheels and the chains. We'll just quickly touch that on. Difficult to get a camera angle here for you to see, but um, you'll see in a second. Now we could obviously take a lot more time with the interior, um, painting all the elements before they go in, but let's say for this particular model, um, I think it suffices to do it this way. There we go. To so pop the roof on, we're finished on the interior now. With um, we don't need so much access to that, so we're just going to uh, pop the pop the roof on. It's going to super glue it into place. In hindsight, here I probably should have repaired that crack in the roof. Um, 
I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do that after the uh, after the video is finished, so you won't get to see that unfortunately. But um, I will do it because I think it needs to be done. Thought we'd get away with that. So we're going to chip the um, chip the top coat off, so the the paint is dried. Um, probably about 30 minutes or so, and then with just uh, plain water and a stiff um, brush. It's just an old brush that I've cut the uh, cut the end off. It's just a tiny little bit left, uh, but it's quite a nice stiff brush and it's good for this sort of thing. The idea is we want to get off as much as the paint as we can now. Um, so the only paint that's left is just the bits in the um, around the edges by the uh, by the details and uh, all the joins etc. I'll just dab it off so we can see what we're what we're working on. Do the same on the other side. So just. Uh, Plain water on the brush. I'm just going to wipe it on just to get it wet. That reactivates the acrylic uh, top coat. And then because the, the lacquer underneath is, uh, is water based as well, that just releases the paint. It just comes off very, very easily. So the aim is to get lots of the paint off, not all of it, just, uh, just leaving bits um, you know, around the joins and some of the detail. Just highlights those a bit more you can see the rust tones coming through you just see that purple very, very faintly at the bottom it's just a, a nice sort of warm color makes the makes the rust look a bit more um, aggressive and or aged on the corrugated ends we don't want to take too much off I'm just going to take a little uh, off some of the raised areas I'm not going to take a great deal of time here at all because I wanted most of that to show we've got uh, something else to put on the end in a minute I think around by the vent at the top um, if that's going to if anything is going to rust on the back that's definitely going to rust so we'll, we'll clean that off and then the other end same again on the top and just a little bit on the uh, on the corrugations there and then obviously I've got the roof the roofers uh, I've got some water on there from my uh, from my gloves uh, so the paint's already started to chip but we'll uh, we'll do it again we'll do it properly now with a brush you can use a softer brush because I don't want all the paint to come off um, slightly different effect that we're going for we want to leave the, the bulk of the paint on the middle of the uh, of the roof gentler with this particular brush and, and this um, this part of the model we just want the roof to look a little bit different to the rest the lights unfortunately reflecting in the in the water so uh, because we couldn't see underneath that what we're doing but I'll move it in a minute yeah but you can see it properly I'm going to let the okay so we've given the um, entire model a um, satin uh, lacquer um, just to protect anything we've done so far and it saves the oils um, sort of eating into the layers below and uh, moving things around that we don't want moved so uh, we've let that dry for just um, 20 minutes or so and then we're going to use some oils to um, to add some extra rusty streaks. Now the oils we're using these are for oil brushes from uh, Mig, and they're pre-mixed. So all we just need to uh, use them straight from the uh, from the little bottle. The brush to come with uh, is is far too big, so we're going to use a size two. 
um, and we're just going to dot some rust on where we think that the rust would sort of be rusting from where they'd be running from. There's no um, rules here obviously, just whatever you feel like doing. We're just going to use one shade of rust uh, for this particular one, and uh, it's the colour from the uh, Vermeer range called, uh, called Rust, um, ironically enough. Um, you can use different shades, two or three. Rust is made up of so many different colours, so you can uh, you can go as crazy as you uh, as you want to. So that needs to just dry for a few moments, and then with uh, with a softer brush. Um, which you would um, dip into your thinners and uh, wipe most of the thinners off. We just want it really, really um, damp. You can see we are brushing it off there. I don't think you need me to show you that because uh, I think you would have worked that one out yourself. But yes, uh, you wipe the excess thinners off and then just straight downward strokes and that would give you the rust effect of the rust runs. good thing about using oils as opposed to um, acrylics which don't run the same as this because um, they dry differently oils um, will stay kind of wet for quite some time they won't set properly for um, quite a number of hours so you've got lots of time to go back and to move it around and take some off if you don't like the effect So just using um, vertical strokes, downward strokes, to simulate the rust running um, because of the, the rain and the, and the weather. The effect looks a little bit over the top there. Um, I let it dry for a little while, but shortly after the, it had dried off camera, I've taken just a bit more off of that. So I've gone back over with the brush. Um, and just um, doled it down just a little bit more. I think the, the effect there was a little bit brighter than I really wanted. So we're gonna use some oils as well for, uh, just to add some, um, it's like a pin wash. And we're gonna use that to the, uh, on the back where the corrugations are. And this is um, oil paint straight from the, from the tube. So it's not thinned at all. So we're gonna use the thinners to, uh, to mix it down into a, into a wash. So we've got thinners there on the right, and there's our um, our oils from the tube is on the on the left. And I think I'm just choosing my brush here. That's why it's taking so long. There we go. And we're just going to thin it down. It is really, really uh, well thin. Because we've got this um, sort of satiny gloss finish on here, the uh, the oils will will run um, using like a capillary action, uh, so running into all the uh, nooks and crannies and the crevices. your brush touch it in and then uh, it will will run um, works it way, its way around on its own and then when you try a bit on the front as well 
maybe around those the vents for instance it just makes the details pop out a little bit more if you get too much on you can just um, use a use a clean brush in some clean thinners and um, you can just, just basically wipe off the bits you don't like it's worth letting it dry off a little bit before you decide um, if you want to add more take some away because it does look different once it dries So some of the final stages, it's just the normal weathering now. So um, along the uh, along the, the chassis, we're going to use um, US Earth Red, which is um, a Vallejo Air color. Um, Vallejo Air means that you don't need to use anything that's already pre-thinned in the bottle. Um, so you just pop it into your air gun and uh, away you go. Now uh, this always looks very bright when we spray this one on. Um, is actually darker in reality it's darker and when it dries it will dry quite a bit darker as well but it's just uh, a nice uh, a nice simple color to use and it's kind of a generic sort of grime um, I've used it on lots and lots of models now I'm not being particularly sort of precise and I don't just want it just on the uh, on the chassis because obviously any mud and grime will splash further up the uh, up the wagon so there's little bits at the uh, at the edge and on the back as well we're going we're gonna um, spray slightly further up the the the, the ends of the uh, the wagon wouldn't get as much weathering um, or, or washing from the from the rain um, because of the way the position of the carriage so uh, it'll have more uh, more grime further up and then if you watched one of our videos before you you'll know that around the axle boxes I normally do a darker shade um, and then we're going to paint the wheels in as well obviously they're going to get a darker shade and uh, and some weathering a bit later on And then our final colour uh, that we're going to use is um, this is called Smoke from Vallejo and um, although you still thin it down it's, it's kind of a translucent colour so a, a see through um, it just gives a nice yellowy browny smoke effect so we're just going to use that along the tops just to add a bit of uh, a bit of interest there you can see the effect more on the roof in a moment there we go, I'm just going to do it around the edges of the roof I'm not going to use too much on there, it just adds another uh, another accent One of my favourite stages is um, adding the weathering powders. It kind of well, brings it all together uh, here. So uh, we've got two colours in there we're going to use. Mainly is that um, is the orangey uh, rust, which is the main sort of rust colour. And then there's a few other colours in there, but the uh, uh, the um, the dark earth from Humbro is the is the main sort of weathering colour we use. So what I normally do is we use the, the brighter colours first. I really don't need that much on your brush, that's why I put it in here. Rather than use it straight from the from the jar, um, I th you end up getting too much, too much on your brush and uh, it becomes a bit of a pain to actually get off your model. So just a tiny bit at a time. So I'm going to go around the whole model, put, put on the, uh, the brighter rust colour, we're on it first of all. 
and then I can go around with the other weather impalers and then darken down the areas where it's uh, where it needs to be. Darker, um, darker powders now. The maybe not put more rust on, forgot about that bit. There we go. So, we're sort of mixing some of the other colors now. That's the dark earth going on just to uh, just to dull it down a little bit. We don't want it to the rust to be too bright, although, when we use our uh, acrylic varnish in a minute it will um, it will darken it off a little bit more the colors are not so vivid after we've done that it becomes uh, so I uh, bear that in mind um, is, is some of the effect will be lost but um, because we're aware of that we can compensate for that um, at this stage and have it a little bit brighter than it will uh, it will eventually end up I don't want to go mad on the roof. I'm not sure what the roofs are made of, as I said before. So um, I'm not sure at this uh, the times when these were built, if um, zinc and aluminium was uh, widespreadly, widespreadly, was in uh, widespread use um, or widely used. That'd be the one. Um, so if you do know what the roofs were constructed of, um, it'd be useful to know for future. So maybe you can leave a comment down below for me. But in this scenario, we, uh, we're working on the fact that it's uh, a steel type of roof um, with a, a paint or a bitumen coating that slakes off in the sun. So we're adding a bit of weathering powder on the inside, a bit of rust there on the, uh, on the chains. Another colour. This is just a light dust. Um, I'm just going to use a little bit of this inside. Again, just just for a bit of variation. So once all that's done, um, we're just going to fix everything in place with um, with an acrylic um, lacquer. This is uh, matte, so we don't want anything too shiny. And then the final stage, once that's dry, is to use the um, the axle grease, just to add a bit of uh, seeping oil and grease from things like the axle boxes. And on the buffers as well so that's about it thanks for watching yet again um, thanks for joining us hope you enjoyed this one and found it useful and um, look forward to seeing you on the next video I'm off for a cup of coffee bye for now